Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Road. I'm going to be going over how to open a treasure chest and being able to interact with objects in Unreal Engine 5. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be using this K-Kit Dungeon Remastered Pack, which is free on itch.io, who makes really amazing low poly assets. And check it out, check it out in the link below. So I'll just import the chest and the material, and I'm going to right click, hover over blueprint and click blueprint interface. And I'm going to call this BPI underscore or interact underscore BPI. And a blueprint interface defines a set of functions that other blueprints can implement. So it acts as a contract ensuring that any blueprints implementing the interface will provide the specified function. This is also really good for optimization and performance measures. So I'm going to double click to open up this interact BPI and I'll call this function something like interact. And that's all I need in here. So I'll hit compile and save and close this out. And I'm just going to right click, select blueprint class and select an actor. And I'm going to call this BP underscore chest. And I'm going to double click to open this up. And I'm going to add a static mesh, actually two static meshes. And one will be the base and the other one will be the top side of the chest. So I'll just call this chest lid or just lid. So for the base, I'll look for that chest static mesh like this. And then for the lid, I'm going to look for the, the lid. And as you can see, it already fits perfectly and I'll leave it as that. I need to go to my class settings and under implemented interfaces, I can add that interact BPI that we created. So I'm just going to click to add that in. And now on the left side, you'll see interfaces and you'll see this function called interact. So I'll double click. And now what I want to do is implement a function that happens every time we use this event interact. So we can test this out with a print string for now. And I'll do something like open chest. So for debugging purposes, I'm just going to add a box collision. And this is going to pretty much allow and see if our characters near this. So I'm going to go back to the viewport and make it a bit bigger. So if we're in this range, then we can interact with this chest. And now for the box collision, I want to go down towards this collisions and make sure that it's set to overlap all dynamic. And now we'll go back to our third person map, open up this world setting. And if you don't have that, you can go to window, click on world setting, make sure there's a check next to it so that you see it over here. And then open the magnifying glass next to BP third person class to open this up and double click to open up that blueprint editor. And now below all these functions in the event graph, I'm just going to use a debug key E and I'm going to add a for each loop with a break. And basically this array is going to check for whatever overlapping actors there are. So I'm going to get, get overlapping actors. And in this class filter, I'm going to select that chest we created. So BP chest and next to loop body, I'm going to drag this out and look for a branch. And if this is true, then we want to be able to interact with it. So I'm just going to call in that interact just like this. And the array element of this for each will be connected to this interact just like that. And then this will go back to the break for the for each. And now I'll hit compile and save. And I'll go to the map and drag in the chest like so. And now when I hit play and click E next to it, you're going to see on the top left, it says open chest. And I'm just spamming the E button just so you can see it. But now let's actually make the chest open. So I just need to set a timeline in the event graph of BP chest. So the way I'm going to do that is just drag this out add a timeline and I'm going to call this chest opening. And after it updates, I want to set location and set actor location and rotation. And this is going to be only for the lid because that's the only thing we need to move. So after making my timeline, I'm just going to go back to the viewport and only control the lid and see what values we want for our location and rotation. So I'm going to use, so as you can see, it's not really shifting up correctly. It's kind of going around a center pivot point for this mesh itself, but let's just edit that itself. So when a player opens this chest, I want it to, I think this is a pretty good spot. I want it to take these values in. So 3890 for the location and negative 60 for the rotation. So now I'll hit compile and save and I'll reset these to zero after I record these measurements down. So I'll go over to the event graph, drag this lid out and then drag a pin out from the lid and do set location and rotation. And we'll select set relative location and rotation. And now we could select the new rotation and location from here. So if I were to do negative 60 for the rotation on the X axis, and 30 for the Y on the location and 90, then you'll see that as soon as I hit E, or actually let me reset the lid values to zero. So now when I go back to my map, hit play and click E, you're gonna see that it instantly just opens, but let's animate it so it looks a bit smoother. So in that timeline we created in BB chest, in the event graph, I'll double click to open this up, add a new float track and I'll do something like two seconds to open up, click add track, and I'll just add three points. So one is gonna be zero zero which is our starting zone and then i'll shift click to add another point and highlight this and do something like one and 90 
and then another one to be two and let's try 90 itself. So now I'll click F on my keyboard to see our entire chart and right click or highlight over these and select two, or you can highlight over them, right click and change it to user just to give it more of a curvature, just like that. So now let's just test this out. So I'll just call this timeline location Z because in my BP chest, I'm gonna right click on this new location and just split the struct because we only need to modify the Y and the Z. So I'll connect the location Z over to the Z. And then I'll double click to open this again, add another track and call this location Y. And now I'll add my points again. So this time it's gonna be zero, zero for the first one. And then the second one will be one and 30. And this third one will also be two and 30. You only really just need the first point. So if you wanna delete that, that's totally fine. And I'll just select these two and give it a big curve. And then I wanna add another track, another float track. And this is gonna be called rotation. And let's see which axis that's on. So rotation X. And I'll just hold shift, left click, set the time to zero, zero. And then another one will be one and negative 60. And then I'll click F on these and highlight them and hit two on the keyboard to give them that little smooth curve line. And then go back to event graph and I'll just connect these to location Y. And then I'll split the struct for the new rotation and connect rotation X to new rotation. And usually you could avoid this if you just reset the origin pin, the origin point of this. Because as you can see, when we rotate this, it's not completely centered. I understand why the 3D modeler did this. It's because it's just meant for the chest itself. And maybe it can just move back and fall back like this. But yeah, we just wanted to kind of come up like an actual chest. So now when I hit play and hit F11, then I can go up to this and you'll see it curve back just like a chest. And it kind of flew up a little bit and that's just because of the curvature, but you can always fix that in the timeline. So now let's add one more thing. And we're gonna add a little UI that tells us that we can add, that we can interact with this. And I'm just gonna go to this icons8.com with the E button and I'll hit download and I'll just download a decent size PNG. Oh, only the 100 by 100 is free, so I'll download that. And I'll just drag that into my Unreal folder or Unreal game, Unreal Engine. So now you'll see there's this E key, it's see-through, um, but I guess for the purpose of the tutorial, this is fine. And now I'm just gonna create a widget blueprint. So I'm gonna right click, go to user interface and add a widget blueprint. And I'm just gonna call this, select widget user and call this interact EWBP. Double click to open this up and I'll just add an overlay and drag it into interact E. And then I wanna add that texture. So I can look for an image, drag this into my overlay. And then under brush, I'll be able to select an image and I can look for that E key that we have. And I'll just center this. So I'll just center align horizontally and I'll align it towards the bottom. And I'll add some bottom padding of something like 100 and hit compile and save. So now in my BP chest, I'm just gonna hit, I'm just gonna click on my BP chest or click on the box, scroll all the way down until I see events and open this on component begin overlap, click this plus sign, and then also go back to box and create an on component end overlap. So now there's a couple things I need to do. So for the on component begin overlap, I'm going to add to create widget. And now we're gonna select that widget blueprint we just created. So which is called interact. And we'll just add to viewport and make sure you connect that return value to the target. And on component end overlap, we're gonna remove all widgets. And now let's check this out in our third person map. So you'll see that while I'm in the box, you'll see the E interact key at the bottom. And when I leave, it's gone. So this is telling my player that I can interact with this. Of course, you can select a better image than the one that I did. And when I hit E, it opens. And that's how you use Unreal Engine 5 to open a chest, add an interaction key, and play with timelines, and create a good blueprint interface that works for interacting with any object. Thanks for watching Code of the Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.